Lockdown 1.2 is a free update for existing customers. Get it now at aescripts.com slash lockdown. So in the interest of doing a slightly faster tutorial, I'm going to just use a small section from this video. aescripts.com slash lockdown. I normally don't move my face that much when I talk, but I wanted to show how the face tracker worked. So there you go. I'm really creepy looking. aescripts.com slash lockdown. And for this section, we'll also play with some fun effects. So to use the face tracker, first you have to draw a mask loosely around the face. At least that's how I understand it. I never really read the documentation on it, but uh, this tool is really easy to use. You can right click this and go to track and stabilize, track mask, and it will pop up this window. Make sure you select face tracking detailed features and then just play it forward. And now you don't need this mask anymore, so delete that. And uh, these are the points, they are tracked on there. Looking pretty good. So to get these into lockdown, let's just see where we're at just using this face tracker. We have this button here, which is the Mocha or face tracker import. Just press it and it will look for the face tracker effect on the layer and uh, move that on there. Then let's triangulate a mesh and apply. So you can see it does a pretty good job stabilizing. It obviously uh, doesn't get every feature on the face, but it gets a lot of them. Let's lock this down just to see how this is working so far without any additional tracking points. All right, so I'll go into this shot. I've decided I really like this pineapple texture. And I'll set this to multiply. Okay, so you can see that those points are already pretty helpful in getting a lot of the motion in the face, particularly with the eyebrow raise. To undo this, we can go back and take this layer here, copy it, move back, paste it, and then delete the other two layers, and then we're back to where we were. Or you can just hit undo a bunch of times. I'm going to clear the mesh, and I'm going to track a couple of points in Mocha. That's done tracking, looks pretty good. So then before we bring these back into After Effects, we have to uh, set the planar surface for each of them. These are the four points that are going to be delivered back into Lockdown. So I would just keep these uh, contained kind of neatly inside of the shape. Maybe in the case of the ears, a little bit outside of the shape to expand the mesh a little. It's probably going to be a problem that I didn't fully get the border of the face down here connecting the chin across. But we'll deal with that later. Those are all adjusted. Let's save this and move back into After Effects. Now to get these points into lockdown, I'm going to put this over the top because it will be easier to see. And we have to expose our tracking data. So we'll start by tracking layer 21. Hit OK, and then you'll see that uh, Mocha places the points down here. And then this import button for lockdown is actually at the top of the effects, just because some of you have smaller screens. Realistically, if we were going to organize this better, this would be somewhere before or after track points. But, uh, you know, especially if your layout is something like this, it could be handy to just have that up at the top. So now that track is in there, and uh, you basically just have to repeat this for every one of your tracks. I'm sorry we can't do it all at once, but uh, that capability to grab all these at the same time is not exposed to us. Now these points are a bit denser, and one thing that might help actually is to select all these points and internalize them. Lockdown just runs faster when the points are internalized and behaves more predictably. And we're not done tracking yet, but what I want to do is just see where we're at and uh, use the current points we have. 
So what I'd probably do is I would connect some of these points down the beard to make sure this is a logical border and connect some points here on the neck. Since we know the face is an object, it should have its own border. And this is probably a good path for the geometry on the neck. All right, now let's press auto triangulate mesh. We can alt click to delete some of this excess stuff and apply. So you can see how that's stabilized. Let's actually lock it down and put on a texture. We'll go into the stabilized comp, add our pineapples. There it is, beautiful. We'll set this transfer mode to multiply. So you can see how easy that is to get started. Another thing I might do is just cut out this border right now. That will make things easier to see. So I'm going to grab this uh, background layer here. I'm going to use composite brush. And I'm just going to very quickly swipe over this red and then alt click and drag through the body and the skin. Actually, as a rule of thumb, let's set this precision down to 98. You probably never really want that at 100. Long story. And we'll set this to stencil alpha. Not worried about any of that stuff over there. And for this uh, pineapple texture layer, we'll set it to alpha mat to that mask above it. So you can see how easy it was to track these points in Mocha, get them imported, and uh, start to see some pretty good results. I'm going to undo this lockdown process, delete this background, move into here, grab this layer here, which was the stabilized layer. Let's just solo that for a second so you can see it. Stabilized layer. Tab back. I'll paste it. And then I can delete this uh, this original layer that was here and turn this on. And I'll just leave this, uh, this alpha channel here for later use. I'll just call this mask. And I'll clear the mesh. And the last thing we can do is add some additional detail points tracked directly through lockdown. I think for example's sake, it will be better to show this on a separate layer where these points are completely alone. So I'm going to name this face tracker and mocha, and then I'll duplicate this layer. I'll remove all the effects on it and I'll place lockdown. And to do this track, I'm going to use the optional tracking filter, which just makes me look horrifying. Like I wasn't too easy on the eyes to begin with, but geez, kill this with fire. Anyway, then you can just control click some of these important points. And actually, one thing I'm going to do is, uh, this is 1080 footage. This might be a little too extreme on the bordering. So on this filter, I'll set this to two pixels and uh, I'll go into levels and I'll just bring this up a little bit to uh, crank this contrast. One of the things you could do is uh, duplicate the levels and then just try to uh, get the most contrast without losing too much detail. And make sure you're in 16-bit mode when you do this, or 32-bit mode, and you'll get the best results. It's also not a bad idea to run neat video or some other type of denoiser on this. Alright, this is super creepy looking, so let's do this fast. This filter brings out a lot of detail in your pores. And I'm just trying to grab some of the areas that we didn't quite get with Mocha. All right, and actually this is looking a little bit blocky and compressed. This is because I compressed this to uh, ProRes 422 uh, rather than HQ earlier. So I'm just gonna move in here and uh, pull back out uh, my raw clip. See how that looks a lot better. I shot this on a 10-bit Blackmagic camera. Thing is awesome, by the way. And uh, when you compress it, you have to be really careful because when you're using this tracking filter, it really sacrifices a lot of detail that you would otherwise see in the skin and the face uh, using this filter. So try not to compress to MP4. Try to work as uncompressed as you can the whole time if you can help it. All right, now let's hit press to track points and see what happens. We are tracked. I'm going to hide this filtering. So this mostly did pretty good, except you're going to notice here on uh, the eye, some crazy stuff happens. So I'm seeing this point 
and uh, these three points uh, don't work out too well. So as I move forward, see how those shoot up with the eyes? I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but what we can do is let's go to the last frame where these points are good, which is about here, and then let's grab them, holding shift, clicking and dragging to grab a region, and then delete the forward keyframes. So now those just disappear and they won't really be uh, influencing anything past this point. Uh, actually these ones, delete forward keyframes. Okay, that's better. And if you wanted to, you could go to the end of this shot and uh, try to track some of those areas again. Maybe on the corner of the eye and the bottom of the eye. Turn that filter on. Maybe I'll lower the contrast there. Since there seems to be plenty of contrast already without both of those level effects. Alright, so we'll say that this is good. So we need these points to contribute to the other instance of lockdown. So the way that we would do this is uh, we would select all the points and then we would externalize them. And in this other instance of lockdown, I'm pressing U to see all of my points. I'm gonna scroll down on the first instance and copy from one to 116. Now I'll minimize this. And on this other instance that already has a bunch of points, I think if I just select the first point and I paste, After Effects is smart enough to paste all these points in sequence down to 116. I'll delete this instance of lockdown here since we don't need it, since we've ported over all the points. And to speed things along, let's internalize these points. Now these points are internalized. And I'll do the same process as before. And one more thing I can do to expand the mesh in these areas where it's uh, not working so well, I can hold down Control, Shift, Alt, and click. And it creates expansion points that follow along with the existing points. In retrospect, I should have done this before creating the mesh, but whatever, I can just hit auto triangulate. And just remember, you have to have interpolate partial tracks on in order for these expansion points to actually do something, or they'll sit there and do absolutely nothing until you turn it on. I'll apply mesh on this frame. And you can see all the points that are stabilized and working well. And then you can also see some of the points that are slipping, like on the neck, where we might need more tracking data, where what you would probably want to do, and I did earlier, but it took a lot of effort, was use the optional tracking filter to get some detail in this neck, and then hand track it in Mocha and uh, make that work. But because there's a lot of flickering, because there's so little skin detail, and I didn't use any markers, I'm not going to go through that process now. I'll select the layer and press the lockdown button. And for this layer, I'll set this to alpha mat to the mask. I'll go into here. Throw down some pineapples. I'll shut off these other layers because we don't need them. Set this to multiply. Just lighten that up a little bit. And let's just look at this pineapple layer alone. So there you have it. That's how to cover yourself in pineapples. Just looking at my original project file. During this section, I tracked a little bit tighter, and one of the ways I got better results was I tracked the head and the body separately. So I pulled the key on my head to cut that off, and if you take a look in here at this uh, head mask, I won't go through this whole process, but uh, I used Composite Brush, and uh, you can click and drag here on the uh, neck, and I'll click on the beard.
And I was able to get a pretty good mask for just the beard, and I did, uh, you know, a little bit of tracking to cut the whole head off. So it looked something like this with a little bit of uh, blurring on the end of it. And then I separated out the uh, stabilization. I did one layer for just the head and uh, put that against that mat. And then I did another layer with just the points for the body. And uh, I believe all of these were just expansion points to kind of guess where the neck would be. And between the two of these, this works pretty well. Lockdown 1.2 is a free update for existing customers. Get it now at aescripts.com slash lockdown. So how did I add all of these effects? Well, this isn't really a compositing tutorial. This is more about the tracking, but I'll just go very quickly. Um, I have this one comp here, which has just the body in it. And basically, let's just solo this. So when the image is stabilized, you can almost treat it like a still Photoshop document. So all I did was slap in some of these pictures, and when it's reverse stabilized in the outer comp, they follow along. The same general concept applied to the face tattoo. Now the only area where things got a little bit different was when I was working on the eyebrow and this uh, eye bulge here. I actually cut down on the tracking points in this area because I didn't want the eye to be blinking and for this distortion effect, uh, to be affected by that, because the eyebrow moving wouldn't affect um, a change in the eyeball shape, at least in the way that I picture this strange effect. So uh, I just removed some of the tracking points in there on the top, and it loosened the tracking around the eye, so it was mostly just following the position and rotation, rather than warping of the whole socket opening and closing. On this bottom layer, I'll just uh, delete the paint that I had. But basically, this is just a stabilized layer. And I took the clone stamp tool after uh, pre-composing moving lockdown into a new comp. That way I wouldn't have to paint directly over the top of it. Sometimes the uh, clone stamp tool is weird about that. And I just clone stamped off the eye. I did so with a little bit more finesse as to not get any of those areas down there, which I won't get into now, but you do have this uh, erase brush and lets you erase paint only. Anyway, you can do that more nicely, but that was essentially the technique for that. And I'll just remove that. To turn the eye blue, I just did a simple adjustment layer and uh, masked that in around the eye. And I also did some very fast roto for each of the two blinks. It was only like five frames. And for the eye bulge, I added another adjustment layer using the bulge effect. That just makes the eye a little bit bigger and creepier, and this is over the top of everything. So the final result looks like this. aescripts.com slash lockdown. aescripts.com slash lockdown. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.